Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the last talk of the current session. Um, unfortunately, the speaker is, as far as I see, not available. Uh, I hope uh, Mananel pops in during, uh, I, during the time I play his videos so he can he answer a few questions. He is? Yes, great. So, sorry, I didn't see you in the participants just before. Okay. Um, so Manamel is a developer from Cambridge in England. Uh, he lived before in Philadelphia and is now in back, uh, back in England, in Salford, New Manchester. And he grew up scribbling in crayon on the back of punched cards. Um, he's worked for big companies like Nokia, Canonical, and several nonprofits, but retired from full-time development work some years ago to care for their partner. Um, they, are, they were responsible for starting quite a big pet a petition to put Alan Turing on English banknotes. And we know how much work it was to re rehabilitate Alan Turing in the history. And as well as an Easter egg in the man comment, uh, and uh, man I use a lot. I haven't found an Easter egg, obviously, so I have to train more. So I will play his, his pre-recorded talk now, and afterwards we have a session. So YEX is a tech emulation written in pure Python. I'm trying to make as faithful a recreation of the tech core as possible. I've got a strong test suite, and I've got plenty of inline documentation. While I began the project as a means of learning tech better, it has grown beyond that in every direction and continues to be an ongoing project. Because of this origin, I'm using the tech book as a spec rather than working from the web sources. Any re-implementation, especially one which re-implements a compiled system in an interpreted language, necessarily has a set of goals which differ from the original. This serves to add diversity and a robustness to the tech ecosystem. Here are my goals. Firstly, YEX aims to get things right before aiming for completeness. That is, it values depth over breadth. The most commonly used functionality is implemented, and it can set basic documents successfully. Secondly, Python has a rich existing infrastructure. It's a wonderful resource. YEX is making as much use of that as possible. For example, PDF handling can be handled by Python's existing PDF libraries, markdown handling by the markdown libraries. There's a library called Beautiful Soup, which is a wonderful handler for XML and HTML, and uh, and we're using that extensively. Uh, YEX itself is already available in the Python package index, but uh, it's an early version. I don't release new versions very often, so if you want the latest version, you'll have to look on GitLab. Where possible, I'll try to split out parts of YEX into their own special, you know, special libraries, um, so that people can use them in their own projects. I have this principle, you see. It's a fine thing to create something beautiful, but it's a thousand times better to build a source of creativity for others. When I was working on the N900 project at Nokia, um, the amount of stuff that the users came up with, and they could write, um, when they learned they could write uh, app phone apps in Python, was impressive. You know that um, it was inspiring to see that, and I'd like to see that again. Lastly, HTML output. Um, I think tech is well suited for HTML output and formatting it. HTML. There are problems, obviously, and uh, we'll come to that in a moment. Where are we so far? Serialization. Right. All of YEX's internal structures can be serialized. Um, so, if you load an arbitrary document, there's a command line switch to dump out the internal state to standard output. And this is really useful in debugging, obviously, but it also means that you can build a third-party tool that will read in this uh, this output, it's in JSON, 
and um, build something else using it. And again, you know, adaptability is, is a really important thing. Um, it also means that we can cache the uh, the state of the system, which is important because the X is slow, basically. It takes maybe 10 seconds at the moment to load plain.tech, which, uh, which kind of makes it unusable. Um, but once we can write it out into the cache and read it back, it'll be near instantaneous. Um, it will, yes, will be faster. You know what Knuth says about um, premature optimization, right? Uh, yeah, serialization works, caching doesn't. Yet, working on it. Doc strings. Python classes and functions allow you to document them in line with a string at the start. Um, it's a literate programming device, and it's called a doc string. And there's a program called Sphinx, which reads these in and produces HTML documentation, which uh, there are websites that host, like uh, readthedocs.org. And um, generally, you format them using restructured text or, or markdown. But there's going to be, it's in the works, there is going to be uh, another plugin for um, for Sphinx that will take descriptions of each function and class in tech and produce the HTML. Um, and obviously it uses Yex to do that. And that will mean that Yex can produce its own documentation. It will also be possible to add input filters for other formatting systems to EX itself. So um, you'll be able to insert uh, HTML documents or, or markdown inline um, into, uh, into, a, into a EX document. Um, each format will need a style sheet of macros, one per tag type, for example. Um, what do we do when we see um, an HTML B element? Well, we switch the font to bold. Um, and each macro gets called when the tag is seen to represent the meaning TX. The thing I'm mostly working on at the moment is HTML output. One of the historical barriers to HTML output in tech has been word wrap. Um, HTML is built to reflow the text on the fly, rather shoddily compared to tech, which as you know is very careful about it. Um, but modern HTML toolkits, such as Bootstrap, have a different approach. They divide the available display devices into breakpoints. has nothing to do with them, the tech use of the word. Um, and there are the base, based on the width of the viewport. So there are small uh, for a mobile phone, medium for a laptop, large for a desktop, extra large for a desktop with a huge screen, and so on. And this allows the pages to adapt according to the device in use, which is called responsiveness. Now this system exists for the sake of more complex formatting than word wrap, but it suits the X's purpose as well. It lets us add an every part rule to the HTML output style sheet, which causes each paragraph to be processed four times each with a different H size. The special directives tell the output driver to treat these as four versions of the same paragraph. The driver will meld them together, as with bootstrap breakpoints, so that one version is used on mobiles, one on laptops, and so on. The CSS makes the choice of which version to use based on the width of the viewport, that is, the width of the browser window. There have been many challenges to overcome so far, even beyond the work of re-implementation of a system as complex as tech, not to mention the writing of a test suite to prove it all works. Another factor has been the distance between the priorities of YEX and tech, which reflects the 40-year difference between them. 
Unsurprisingly, for a program designed in the late 1970s, tech has a general assumption of scarcity. There are only so many registers of each kind. Python expects you to say what you need and assume that the resources will be found. This difference in approach makes implementation far more interesting. For example, producing call stack traces for errors in tech macros proved aggravatingly difficult because a tech macro can be curried by omitting its final argument. So, if you had a macro that printed hello something, and you supplied the something as an argument, um, you could call that at the end of another macro's um, definition, and then the first macro would read its argument when the second macro was called. Because of this, the state of text stack can't be mirrored by the Python stack, and any part of the tech code might be pushed onto text the token stack, and the call stack would still need to remain consistent. The solution involves a special class of token called internal, which runs a given Python callback when it's processed. And these aren't tokens that can be generated by the tokenizer. They can only be pushed back by um, implementation of particular um, controls. So we use them for macro prologues and epilogues to manipulate the, um, the call stack. Another example is encapsulation. It's an important principle in Python. Tech isn't careful with namespaces, and the effects of one library can leak into another. This means that the order of loading tech libraries can easily affect the results, so libraries can't be cached individually. The cache value of a library will vary according to which libraries were loaded before it. For example, you could have a library which redefined the value of the letter A. Any letter A used in a subsequent library would have the new value. Thus, EX must wait until it's seen all the initial input commands before making any decisions about caching, and when it knows the full list of libraries needed, it must load them from the cache in order as a group. So, my initial goal is to be able to typeset the tech book, but that's still a long way off. But of course, the speed at which we get there depends on how many people share the work. Contributions are always welcome. Beyond that, I have a goal to make sure EX gives solid results with as many of the packages and the standard tech distributions as possible. Processing LaTeX will be a very important step, but a huge one. There's also many other tech-like projects whose ideas we can share. Many of them have been discussed at this conference, and I look forward to seeing how we can work together. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks a lot for your presentation and also your work on implementing tech in Python. Um, I think I, I, if you remember, I was the one to to push you to change the name from so. I, the name original was Max, and since I know that Max is somehow taken already in the in the tech universe, I suggested uh, something else, and uh, Manuel greatly uh, immediately responded and helped to this. So I'm I'm very happy to see these kind of projects going on, and I hope to hear a lot of questions and comments from, well, everyone interested. It's all right if not, they can, you know, can email me. Ah, oh, well, it normally takes a bit. Don't, don't worry. Okay. So there's the first one here. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, go ahead. Um, sorry, I want to... Um, sorry for taking this delay and setting up. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. I was really interested by it in the program. And uh, I've very definitely got an interest in history in developing Python tools for tech. So that's me personally. Uh, there's a resource that um, 
I think you want to know about, which is that at TUG 2020, two years ago, Brandon Rhodes uh, gave a keynote on typesetting with Python. Oh. Uh, his, his, his concern was not on the, so to speak, um, oh, how can I put it, tech macros, for example. It was looking at things from an algorithmic point of view, and he was interested in it in terms of the psychology if you like, of um, program development. Uh, it was, it's a really good talk. It was first given at the London Pi Data Conference, again as a keynote. Um, right. So I highly recommend that to you. Uh, I, um, I live in Milton Keynes, so I'm actually quite close to where Alan Turing worked. All right. During the Second World War. So I'd be happy to talk with you about all sorts of things. I'll put the, I've just put the link to the video in the chat. Oh, thank you. And I, I, I'll, I'll hope you'll get in touch with me, uh, or I get in touch with you after this conference is over and we're a, bit, a little less busy. <laughs> right. Thank you. So I'll stop now in case there's another question. Yeah, just a comment. I think the the, the interaction between tech and Python has a long history. There are lots. But as far as I see, this is the first uh, project where actually tries to re-implement the algorithms of, of tech in, in Python, um, which makes it a, an interesting project in particular because, I mean, I know this problem from a lot of software developers. We have a lot of programmers who know Python, but far less who know C and far less who know Pascal or whatever, or, 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 I mean, so web, it, it? it is, or, or, or web actually, I mean, there I don't speak. So it's a, it's a nice idea and I, I, I'm, I'm, so I, I personally invited Manuel to, to ask him with a GitHub issue to push him to, to give a talk here. So I'm very, thanks a lot again for your presentation. Thank you for very, very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um... It's um, one of the things I'm looking forward to is that, I mean, in theory, this is possible already, but I haven't actually played with it very much, that um, because all of the controls in EX are implemented by Python classes, it's possible just to come up with a completely new control to, to do anything you like um, and implement it in, um, implement it in uh, Python rather than, than, than as a, a tech macro. Um, so you always have the option now, and um, yeah, this is a this is a, a an important thing because um, a while back, a while back, I was doing some work typeset typesetting um, uh, things in Shavian, the, the Shavian alphabet. I don't know if you know it. it was an alternative alphabet for English, proposed in the nineteen fifties, sixties sort of time, um, and there is stuff in tech to do that but at the time I had you know the, the amount of background you needed to know about meta font and all sorts of things and I didn't have the background and uh, you know I set my thesis in uh, in in tech and you know well in latex and late, latex and that was about as far as I'd gone and that was mostly copy and paste for difficult bits and um and I couldn't work out, I couldn't work out uh, the, the nuts and bolts of it um, because, as you say, I didn't have the background in um, in in, uh, in tech or, or or Pascal or anything. Okay, I did know Pascal, um, but but um, the idea of uh, you know sort of way into it that um, that I that I had from you know knowing Python and as you say, Python is a popular language these days um, would have been incredibly useful. Yes, indeed. So there was Bernd Reichle raised his hand. Bernd, please speak up. Yeah, I hope I'm hearable. Yes, I... we hear you. So, okay. Um, so more than 15, 20 years ago, there were, were several uh, uh, approaches to re-implement tech. And one of the approach was NTS. So the other minor approach was eTech these um, additional web things, so uh, from the web-based tech. Um, but 
one thing was I I'm um, have discussed this with the inventors were Omega. So Yanis Haralambus um, and John Place so um, presented their re-implementation of a better typesetting system with all the ideas of tech, but with extended data structures. And this is because nowadays you have fast computers, you have a lot of memory, so you can just extend many, many things of the data structures within tech because in, in, 20, in, in, in 17 and 80s, so last century, um, Knuth struggled with the restrictions of the memory he had all the time. If you look at all these old documents, his old logs, and I would be in favor to see something which extends the tech data structures of a glyph. So the description of a glyph, also the boxes, etc. So mm -hmm. in a way that you are using the principle of tech using boxes and clues. So, but extend this probably with some of the ideas of Omega. So to have boxes which are already boxed, but which probably promote the stretchability and shrinkability to the outside. Thus you can box a box. So, and still clue and press, compress it a little bit. And even the inner box will be compressed. So yeah. to a certain time, but this needs an extended data structure yeah. because the web-based tech is a little bit too restricted. And yeah. nowadays um, also Patrick Gundlach's re-implementation. So where, which was described in, in another talk. So mm. it's one of these possibilities to just lift some of these restrictions in the old tech to a, yeah. new, to a new place, to a new level. And also the um, work um, which were presented so by Mikhail about um, Hans Hagen's extensions of these math, micro math typesetting things is also the, all these math things are hard coded in tech, inside tech. The, the spacing of, of these math um, entities are hard coded inside tech. And if you can change it, this would be nice. So that's, there's a lot of things to do mm. to first understand tech, to first understand the principles or the data structures. But I think the next step would be to just go open it up to make it a little bit more clever, a little bit more extensible. This would be nice. And therefore I, I'm in favor of all these different kind of re-implementations playing around with the tech uh, data structures and with the tech algorithms. Yes. Thank oh, you. very much so. I, um, yeah, if you could write, if you could write all that down and email me, it would be very helpful. But um, the, um, I was, it's not, when I, I mean, I began by saying this is a, a uh, an emulation, an, em an emulation, I think I said, but some, um, I mean, as you can see, as you know, um, this isn't like uh, when people build a, an emulation of the, the Apple II so they can play their yes. old adventure games. Um, I'm, um, and I, I don't I'm, want to have an emulation of the old sail machine to have a running very old tech. This is not the means, but it's yeah. a better tech. And this yes. Uh, yes, opening up the data structures yeah. would probably allow also oh, to 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 uh, extend also the serialization of yeah. something. I've to, um, to add, for example, one... on a various level some semantic information. So yeah. and um, to uh, to have a, um, a easier to handle thing. So removing all yeah. the yeah optimizations of GNUs. Yeah, um, one of the um, the uh, the synthesis of the well, what I'm thinking is the, the synthesis of the original um, core um, with modern stuff um, yeah. means that, uh, as you say, much more powerful stuff is uh, is yes. possible. And um, and uh, one of the things I want to do when I have um, 
when I have the basic you know core of it working is to look into uh, how this stuff has been done and uh, and see how much how how many of their ideas I can adopt into in into the X kernel. So um, so you know like as you say uh, associative arrays and, and and so on are really important things these days and weren't really possible when Knuth wrote the uh, wrote the original. And uh, it was a thing with the with the Shavian transliteration as well, by the way, having uh, two versions of each word and, uh, you know, doing any sort of lookup with from the one to the other was uh, was was well nigh impossible. You know, there are ways, but uh, but they're hacks and, uh, and and this sort of thing would have uh, would have been really useful. Exactly. And some of the many ideas are already described in the old Omega papers. So, and therefore, yeah. uh, for um, example, and also old papers so for about hyphenation, because there are languages where this simple hyphenation, where you just put in a hyphen. So on the on the last line yeah. and the, the next line starts with a remaining word is yeah. not always true for all languages because there are some languages where the hyphen is put on the last so line and started right. at the next line and this is right. not directly yeah. possible with tech you can use this right. discretionary so to insert it uh, but it's not not directly supported right and therefore it's it's probably in favorable to is, um, continue with your implementation, but also look at old mm. ideas and oh, check definitely. if they can easily be included in your work. This yeah, would definitely. be, I yeah. think, to to add more puzzle pieces to get a full a full and a better system. Yes, <laughs> yes certainly. And um, and uh, conversely, there's um, there's a lot of stuff that's that you know you find in the tech distributions which uh, where people have got things to work in i don't know like like someone was saying about the polish um fixes that would need to be re-implemented um in 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 the modern system if you if you started from beginning from the beginning and uh yeah as, as you say things that aren't easy in, uh, in in standard tech and um things that have already been done you know being able to do both of them together is uh, is a powerful thing yeah i have a lot more research to do basically. i i have to i have to completely agree with that as uh, one of my earliest contribution to the tech world was supporting uh, tibetan with omega so i'm more than happy that bernd brought up uh, omega and 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 its work here that's that's uh, I, I think it's a very good suggestion actually <laughs> No, no, but is it my turn now? Sorry? Can, can I? I've been waiting for a minute or two. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I put a couple of links into the chat, which you've acknowledged. I'd like to put them into the audio so that the people watching on YouTube can also know this. So the links are to Plastec, which I've used, which is a Python package that produces LaTeX documents into an XML DOM type ob object from which you can render it how you want. There, the main goal is HTML. And there's uh, Andrew Kutchling's um, uh, TechLib, uh, which is a Python implementation of text line wrapping algorithm. I don't think it has all the bells and whistles, such as hanging indents and paragraph shapes, but it's got the basic algorithm for optimizing through linear programming. Uh, I think it would be really useful if you and I were able to get together and produce a list, a curated list, if you like, of Python tech resources. Certainly. That would be, a, uh, a, I mean, put it in Tug as well. That would be, uh, you know, the Tugboat rather would be very useful. And, and, and what, one last thing, which is that until I think Python 2.5, I'm pretty old, um, the Python documentation was created, you, it was authored in LaTeX, and a customized version of LaTeX to HTML was used to create the HTML, and the Python was run directly to produce the PDF. 
uh, with the ascendancy of HTML over PDF, at least in the realm of Python developers, a special language was developed, an input language, and tech for H. Uh, and and uh, they no longer authored in, in LaTeX. But that was uh, an important part of the history of Python and an uh, indication of its pragmatism about using existing tools and also letting go of existing tools. I'll stop at that point. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to mention that um, I should have found uh, the, uh, it would have saved me some trouble to find the, the line wrapping uh, stuff before I re-implemented it. Um, although I'm sure I can get ideas from it. But there was other things like, uh, I know TFM and PK aren't um, as used as they were at one point, but I couldn't find any implementations of, uh, of uh, the TFM, uh, of, uh, that read the TFM format. And I had to dig back in issues of Tugboat to, to heaven knows when, to find the documentation of the PK format to implement it. Um, the documentation is inside the, web programs you have to look into pk type for example or into the, okay. the different converters and the same applies right. for the tfm it's either right. in, in, in now, meta font uh, so or in the in the various tf to something tf to pl pl to tf yes the web. Yeah, it is. yeah yeah it is i yeah. i wrote um a, a processor for dvi right in python as part of another project and I based everything on the DVI type program. Right. It DVI type has the is a program that checks your DVI file for consistency. All right. Just as disk check or FS check checks your file system for consistency. And the same goes for the other format. So Knuth is very, very thorough. He uh, not only makes as few errors as he can, but he detects as many errors as he can. Yeah, I started stop. through the trip tests, and uh, yeah, at some point I'm sure Hex will be able to pass them. But uh, I mean, I learned, I learned uh, useful things from them, like uh, edge uses of the immediate command. But um, yeah, I'm a long way from being able to uh, to pass the test. But I'm so glad they exist. So we have a few more minutes for questions or comments. This has been really productive, thank you. Well, if not, thanks again. Thanks a lot for your work. Thanks a lot for, for coming here and presenting it. Um, I'm very aware that presenting stuff uh, which, is, which isn't completely ironed out and, and in development is often a challenge for many people. So I appreciate it a lot that you came here. Um, I followed, I'm following your project since I think the very beginning, since the first time you posted it. And I look forward for your next presentation next year to TAC 2003, uh, 23, when you hopefully pass the trip trap test, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's ambition. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, big ambition. That is true indeed. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining the session. We will have a bit more than one hour of break, um, one hour and seven minutes. And yeah. Take your time, relax, and see you back in a, uh, for the next session. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you.